Hey everybody. Today I want to talk about why we add aquarium salt when we're treating sick fish. It seems like no matter what the ailment or malady, we're told to put some aquarium salt in with our fish when we're treating them, whether it's ick or dropsy or the fish has scraped and scratched itself on some decor and it has a physical abrasion. We're always told to add some aquarium salt to our fish while we're treating it. Whether we're heat treating it or we're using medications, it always seems to say to add some aquarium salt. And I wanna make it clear, I'm not talking about using salts as a treatment. In other words, like a salt bath. That would be where you actually take the fish out of the aquarium and you put it in a solution that's a very high concentration of salt and you leave it in there for maybe anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes, depending on what you're trying to do. And in that case, we're actually using the salt itself for the treatment and that would be considered a salt bath. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when you're treating for ick, for example, they'll say, you know, raise the temperature to 81 degrees, put an air stone in the tank, and it's always a good idea to put a little bit of aquarium salt in there. You can add one teaspoon per gallon is the usual recommendation. And I used to wonder what that was for, and I get a lot of comments from people that seem to suggest that people think the salt is having some sort of impact on whatever it is you're treating. In other words, people think that the salt is affecting the ick or the salt is affecting the fungus that's you know part of the fungal infection or maybe the salt is impacting the way the bacteria grows or something like that. And that's not it at all. That has nothing to do with it at all. Uh, ick is sensitive to salt as is some fungus and probably even some bacteria. But the levels of salt you need to reach to impact the ick, for example, ick takes almost marine levels of salinity before ick starts being affected. So your fish would die before the ick would if we were using the salt to try to impact the ick. So what is the salt for? The salt is there to provide sodium ions for your fish. And that's it, that's all it's for. Uh, fish need sodium. It's an important electrolyte. We need it for um, you know, the, the, the nerve conduction in our bodies. Our muscles don't work properly. Our brains don't work properly if we don't have the proper amount of electrolytes. And sodium's a really, really uh, important electrolyte along with potassium and a few others that we really, really uh, begin to uh, affected by if we don't have enough of them in our diet. And freshwater fish have mechanisms within their gills that actually extract sodium from the water. That's why I always say with my softened water that has additional sodium ions in it, those additional sodium ions go a long way towards helping buffer the fact that the fish aren't necessarily in perfectly you know, adapted water for them. The sodium is available to them. And that's what the purpose of putting salt in your water is. It's just to make sodium available for the fish. When salt dissolves into the water, the sodium and the chloride disassociate and you have free chloride floating around and you have free sodium floating around and the fish are able to extract that sodium much more easily when there's lots of it available. And that's all it is. You're just simply making sodium available so that the fish's body doesn't have to do a lot of work in order to extract the sodium. Think about when you've got a head cold or some minor ailment or something. You're exhausted. You didn't do anything all day. You laid on the couch and watched TV and sipped on your chicken broth and yet you're exhausted. Well, the reason you're exhausted is because your body's doing a ton of stuff. You know, there's a lot more to activity than just physical running around kind of activity. And your body is in there and it's doing all this stuff and your immune system's working over time and your lymphatic system's working over time and your, your, your thermoregulation might be going up and down to keep your fever right where your body temperature needs to be. Your body is doing a ton of stuff in order to fight off this infection. Just because you're not running around or lifting weights doesn't mean your body's not working hard and it needs a lot of energy to do that and so you sleep while your body gets on with fixing what's broke and the same thing is going on with fish if the fish are busy trying to deal with some sort of infection or something like that, their bodies need all the energy they can spare towards coping with whatever infection they're coping with. And they don't need to waste a lot of energy trying to extract sodium out of the fresh water because it takes a lot of energy to extract sodium out of water that has very little sodium in it. So you put a little bit of salt in the water, 
boom, they've got tons of sodium and it's almost effortless for the fish to be able to just get all that sodium they need. It's one less thing their body needs to worry about and they can get on with dealing with the ick and so on and so forth. And that's it. That is the reason we put additional sodium in our aquariums. If you were doing a salt treatment, that is typically uh, an osmotic type treatment. You would be doing treatments typically for uh, bloating, like a dropsy, where you're actually trying to put it in a salt bath and that high salinity outside the fish's body is gonna extract moisture and reduce some of the swelling on the fish, or sometimes you will do a salt bath for external parasites. If you've got gill flukes uh, or very small external parasites, the salt bath does something very similar. That high concentration of salinity outside the animal's body, both the fish and the gill flukes, it's, it's pulling moisture out of the animal's body. The fish can spare a lot more moisture than those tiny little parasites can. And so those parasites wind up getting killed off or just letting go of the fish and trying to swim away to get to safer conditions or whatever. But it cleans them off of the fish before the fish has time to really be impacted by the high levels of salinity. And that's why we do a salt bath. Conversely, you can take marine fish and you can give them a freshwater bath and it does the exact opposite thing. Their bodies already have a high concentration of salts and so when you put them in the freshwater, water starts flooding into their salty bodies and their cells will actually rupture as the water floods in and, and floods in too fast, individual cells will rupture. And again, the fish can spare a lot more cells than these little tiny parasites can. And so these parasites get killed off or release from the fish and swim away in an attempt to get to safer conditions. And then you take your fish out and you put it back in your saltwater aquarium and it's good to go again. So that's the difference between treating with salt and then adding some aquarium salt. Again, Again, if you're putting a teaspoon of aquarium salt in a gallon of water, it, that's, that's way, way below even the taste threshold. Try it one time. Put a teaspoon of salt in a gallon of water and then taste the water. You, you won't even taste the salt. You've got to get up to about a tablespoon of salt in a gallon of water before you can even tell it's got some saltiness in it. There's no way that that little bit of salt is treating any type of disease that's in the tank. That salt is simply there to provide extra sodium so your fish's bodies don't have to work so hard in order to extract it. So that's it, that's my two cents on my thoughts about putting salt in our aquariums. I would love to hear your comments down below. Uh, don't forget, I've got merch now. I've got an Amazon storefront with all kinds of good stuff that I use and recommend around here got my other channel i got memberships available now i got super thanks that i always appreciate and you can get super stickers so all kinds of good stuff going on with the channel and for anybody that's still watching i have learned a few new tricks with editing so hopefully my quality of my videos will be getting a little bit better here in the very near future too so look forward to that again make sure you're subscribed thanks for watching this one and i'll see you real soon in the next one